absolute want to thank all the guardian angels here in Brentwood Bay. There was people coming up and offering blankets and food and coffee. I don't want a bunch of cranky people out here yeah. mad at each other. No. The generosity of Vancouver Islanders shines through on a long night for hundreds stranded during the Malahat closure. Cleaning up and drying out the day after what the province is calling the worst storm in a century. And shining a light on a dark industry, Jan Arden joins the call to help an island horse rescue that saves the animals from slaughter. Good evening, thank you for being here tonight. We begin on the Malahat, the only major corridor in or out of Greater Victoria, partially reopened this morning after a closure that lasted more than 18 hours, but has since closed again for repair. As CTV Scott Cunningham shows us, there's just not going to be a quick fix. A raging torrent has carved a hole in the Malahat Highway. The weekend's 100-year storm causing extraordinary damage to the vital island connection. And then I've been stuck in Victoria ever since. We were trying to get home yesterday. We live in Campbell River, so we got stuck here last night. As drivers were stranded during a total overnight closure, morning brought a single lane for alternating traffic. Time-lapse footage shows the sluggish and at times two-hour commute. I think we're definitely going to need alternate routes. I mean, this kind of proves that. The level of damage to the mountain crossing is still unknown. What is new today? The potential length of disruption. Single lane traffic is likely to continue for a week and total overnight closures will start tonight at 7 p.m. and run to 6 a.m. and from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. for the next five days at least. We'll do everything we can to get transportation links open as soon as possible and get people and goods moving. While many of the people in this huge line are simply trying to get home, they were trapped overnight. As we look forward, there is a new type of paralysis, one facing our island economy. It's an overused word, but it is unprecedented. BC's trucking and transportation industries are reeling. While mainland highways are simply decimated and timelines are unknown, the outlook for the Malahat offers a glimmer of hope. Everything that you get, um, you know, particularly your your day-to-day -day consumables, you're still going to get them. Um, they just may take longer to get there. You may not have the selection. As crews begin painstaking, round-the-clock construction, the question of an alternate route to the Malahat is brought back by the rain. I think it's ridiculous that the city of Victoria has one single lane road running in and out of the main corridor. Scott Cunningham, CTV News, Malahat. Plan B for hundreds trying to skirt around the Malahat closure was BC Ferries. Four additional late night sailings have been added tonight on the Brentwood Bay Mill Bay route, but it's not a big boat. Yesterday, a special crew was called in and shuttled people back and forth for hours overnight. As CTV's Yvonne Raymond shows us, people stuck in line were overwhelmed by the kindness of strangers. Oh my gosh, thank you very much for this. Gestures like this. Pumpkin millet muffins, would you like one? <laughs> and that leave a big impression on stranded travelers after a long, uncomfortable night. As far as weights and lineups go, it, there's a lot of people making it easier. We've been here all night, yep. Oh, it was terrible. Cramped up, my back hurts. <laughs> With the Malahat closed and washed out by rain the day before, hundreds of cars lined up to catch the Brentwood Bay to Mill Bay Ferry. I've been trying to leave since 11 o'clock yesterday morning. you got to move every 45 minutes so you don't really get a lot of sleep. Demand was so high, BC Ferries called in a crew to run through the night for a total of 16 extra sailings, helping about 320 more vehicles pass through. These events are uh, very unusual and uh, just pleased that our crew was able to assist last night. The neighborhood also rallied to brighten spirits. Offered their homes for people, the community center. Treats and blankets and, you know, they were offering all kinds of, of wonderful things. Those cute little kids dropped off a bag of cookies. We made them this morning. Why? It just makes me feel good. And because, they ask, how would you feel if you were them? It would be pretty uncomfortable. 
and I'm really cranky when I'm cold, so <laughs> I don't want a bunch of cranky people out here yeah. getting mad at each other. No. Oh, I just want them to have a little something. <laughs> Thanks very much. A little something that means a lot. Yvonne Raymond, CTV News, Central Saanich. Amazing. Well, more than 100 people were forced to evacuate their homes on the Halal First Nation in North Cowichan as a result of this historic storm. Now, Mid Island residents and businesses are calling on all three levels of government to mitigate issues in the Shimanus River. 120 people were forced to leave their homes yesterday from the First Nation and are now staying in hotels in Parksville. The chief for the nation says once the concrete median on the Trans Canada Highway gave way, water flooded the reserve. The island highway is a barrier, the Enan Railway is a barrier, so we need to look at drainage and get better drainage for everything. You know, and if it goes away when it's supposed to, then we won't be in this situation. The chief expects the majority of people evacuated can return to their homes by the end of the week. The Halalt First Nation says it also received funding after the last major flood in February 2020, which went toward upgrading their septic systems and elevating homes on the reserve. Staying in North Cowichan, where Russell Farm Market staff are cleaning up the mess left by the flooding. Staff say the business doesn't have insurance to cover the damage and won't until repair is done to the Shimanus River. I like the government to move instead to find reason and say no, it's not going to happen again. It's just a pineapple. It come only one time every 40 years. Yeah, guys, thanks a lot. Okay, I got to go. Sorry, guys, I, I'm, I'm done. The business is raising money to rebuild through a GoFundMe campaign. Now to the landslides and flooding that have crippled BC's interior and severed its connection to Metro Vancouver. There was confirmation today one person killed in a mudslide while two people are still unaccounted for. It happened on Highway 99 between Pemberton and Lillooet. Shannon Patterson has more on the depth, the death rather, and a couple who barely escaped. It was really scary. The photos on their phone, a reminder of how close Melissa and Dave Medeiros came to being swallowed up in a massive mudslide south of Lillooet. It was really surreal. Kind of feels like describing a movie at this point. It doesn't really feel like describing real life. The Vancouver couple was heading home from Kamloops Monday afternoon. Every route was closed except for Highway 99. We decided we had to go with it and take that route. Traffic suddenly stopped for a small mudslide on the highway. At that point I got out because I wanted to go see how big this uh, mud flow that we were blocked by. Melissa remained in the car as her husband walked out of sight. I hear this cracking sound and I turn around and the forest is just like moving and coming down maybe like 30 feet behind me. I was just kind of frozen for a minute and then I heard other people start yelling and then it just clicked that I don't know where my wife is. So I ran as fast as I could back to the car and luckily I saw my wife honking and just the car pin driving as fast as she could away from that thing. They managed to avoid the river of mud and debris, but saw several smashed and buried cars off the side of the highway. There was a off-duty firefighter who really got everybody organized and got everybody gathering chainsaws and shovels and ropes and doing everything that they could to um, go in and help get these people out of their vehicles. And so there were a few people who came out of their vehicles one of them looked pretty bloody and knocked up. But not everyone made it out alive. The body of a woman from the Lower Mainland has been found in the slide. Tragic. Um, deepest condolences to the family. A simple drive home gone bad for sure. Um, you know, what more can you say? It's, a, it's, it's just a tragic event. I'm also aware of concerns that there may be additional victims in the mudslide near Lillooet. Search and rescue specialists are conducting significant work in this area and the RCMP will continue to remain involved in these searches. This is the only road connecting Lillooet to Pemberton, Whistler and Metro Vancouver. Until it reopens, the community has essentially been cut off. The Medeiroses are thankful they were able to escape with their lives. Very happy, very lucky to be alive, uh, very, very happy yeah. and lucky that my wife is still here and wasn't caught in it. Shannon Patterson, CTV News, Pemberton. 
While much of the, uh, the province dealt with raging flood waters, homes and businesses went dark. On Vancouver Island alone, around 54,000 hydro customers were without power. In total, BC Hydro has restored power to 219,000 customers across BC. The largest outage on the island happened yesterday in the early afternoon when a tree came down across power lines, affecting 47,000 customers from Colwood to Port Renfrew. Fortunately, crews were able to uh, uh, feed those customers through a different route, and so we're able to restore them uh, sometime later. Uh, full restoration was made around 10 o'clock, uh, 10.30, I believe. Had some issues in the substation, but we were able to make the full switch over and repairs were made. And the outages continued today. More downed wires had hydro crews scrambling. As of this afternoon, about 500 customers across the island were without power. Hundreds of homes in the capital region have flooded, and if one of them is yours, you may have to wait to get help. <sighs> We spoke with remediation companies that are getting hundreds of calls and climbing. They'll be tied up for days with those customers, so people may experience long waits. You're advised to call your insurance company first, and they'll direct you on what to do from there. If you're taking matters into your own hands, know what you're doing first. And you want to make sure you're not tearing out drywall that contains asbestos. You want to make sure that you, the people living in the house are safe first and there's a, there's a safety procedure. So if anyone needs a quick phone call or if anyone wants to just, just shoot some text pictures over to a restoration technician like myself, then we're happy to mitigate it over the phone and let them know where they're at. A further heads up to homeowners, he recommends checking perimeter drains and having a technician look at your property to see if there's anything you can do to prevent damage. Flooding from the storm has heavily damaged one road in Saanich, resulting in a major detour and inconvenience for many. West Saanich Road remains closed from the north side of Prospect Lake Road to the south side of Heartland Avenue. Crews monitored the road overnight, but upon further inspection this morning, it was deemed unsafe. It's expected repairs will take up to 48 hours. It's a location where the road has been undermined and uh, we're still having a kind of a dammed location with um, a culvert that's collapsed and a, a whole bunch of water that's being dammed up behind it. So what we're trying to do is um, dam that water and provide a dry surface where we can work in and, and build a trench to put in a, a culvert temporarily so we can get the ba a road back in service. Drivers wanting to access the Heartland landfill along with other businesses that need access to West Saanich Road are asked to take Keating Cross Road via the Pat Bay Highway. Double mudslides stranded hundreds of people yesterday on Highway 7 near Agassiz. And then rescue crews, including those from 19 Wing Comox, went to work. CTV's Gord Kerbis shows us how they saved lives. For the stranded public, seeing rescue helicopters arrive to airlift them out was a welcome sight. For me, it was okay, but obviously it was shocking for a lot of people. I felt really bad for a lot of people that were obviously very, very scared or had children that were scared. Danielle Jalbert, like many others, became trapped by two landslides along Highway 7. She spent the night in her vehicle until she and her three dogs were flown out on Monday. Looking around, you know, a lot of people are just happy to get out of there. And, you know, a few people that are obviously very scared. I don't know if they were just scared of being on the helicopter or the experience altogether. The motorists were airlifted out by members of 442 Squadron out of CFP Comox. I would say I picked up more people yesterday than I have in the entire rest of my career since I started this. Major John Mascheffrey was the aircraft commander in one of three Cormorants that made numerous trips. We had a little bit of difficulty finding a good landing site just because, as you can imagine, with the mountain power lines in the river there, it was quite a small area to work with. When their task was completed, they had airlifted out 311 people, 26 dogs and one cat. It was a big mix. Obviously, those people were stranded there for uh, quite a few hours, so... Uh, some were obviously very tired, um, some were maybe a little nervous, and some were excited to get out of there. They flew evacuees from the slide area to safety in nearby Agassiz. All the people that were stranded uh, were lined up and ready to go. Uh, they were being managed by the uh, ground search and rescue team. For crews used to rescuing one or two people at a time, evacuating this many was a challenge. 
but was successful because of many agencies working together. You know, we have the federal, the provincial, the municipal, we got SAR volunteer, we got military, we got paid organizations. So once an emergency of this size occurred, they realize how we all come together and actually work together. It's a task rescuers hope, though, they won't have to repeat anytime soon. Gord Kerbis, CTV News, Comox. The BC SPCA is stepping up for people and their pets who were forced from their homes by the flooding. The SPCA is offering up its shelters as a temporary boarding space for pets that can't be with their families because they got flooded out. The team says it's been a scary few days, but Island Pets are faring quite well. Vancouver Island uh, is fairly stable right now. We haven't actually had to take any animals into our shelters, uh, but we're on standby waiting for uh, uh, people who are evacuated to come bring their pets to us if they need that support as a last resort. We know people uh, want to make sure that their pets are taken care of if they're forced to evacuate. Uh, and so, you know, we'll do whatever we can to help people if they need support. <coughs> You can call your local animal shelter if you need to find short-term stay for your pet. <clears throat>